5, the review assignment. We begin by opening a file called Art and then do a Save As and save it as Art Museum. Go to the documentation sheet and fill out your name and today's date in cells B3 and B4. When you're ready, click on the Art Objects tab. We're going to make a table out of this, so we'll go Insert Table. Automatically Excel outlines the entire table and it has figured out that we have headings. So we're going to click OK. And so it's turned this into a table, which gives us the Table Tools Design tab. It did some um, formatting at the same time. And we also have these filter arrows, which we'll use later. We are asked to format this table using the Medium 25 table style. And so in the Table Tools Design tab, you'll find Table Styles. And if you click Table Styles, you'll see a gallery. And they want the medium 25, which is going to be down here somewhere. 425, looks like that one. OK? And if you click away from the table, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. In the Appraised Value field, they want us to apply an accounting number format with no decimals. So we can just click on the H and select the whole column because there's nothing underneath it to worry about. And then in the Home tab, this button is the accounting number format. If you click that, that will apply the accounting number format, but it also gives us two decimal places, and we don't want that. So we'll choose this button, the Decrease Decimal. We'll click it twice to decrease the decimal places to zero. Number four asks us to rename the table and to call it Collection. So that's again under Table Tools Design, and over here at the left you'll see Table Name is Table 1. Yours might be different, it might say Table 2 or Table 3, but regardless, um, we're going to change it. And so we're going to call this Collection. This is an important step. If you miss this step, later on when you're asked to use the Collection table, you won't have one. So make sure you get this done. All right, moving along to step five, we're asked to make a copy of this worksheet and to rename the copy Q5 in preparation for our next step. So I'm going to hold the Sheet tab while I'm holding down Control. I'm going to drag it to the right. I'm going to let go. And when I do, it creates a copy. You can see they're both identical. It calls the copy Art Objects 2 because you can't have two sheet names with the same name. So I will just double click and call this Q5. In question 5, they want us to sort the art objects by date acquired, displaying the newest date first. So in my data tab, I have a sort feature and I can go A to Z or Z to A. And the sort that you want, if you want the newest date first, then what you have to do is you have to do a Z to A sort. I want to sort on the date acquired, so I've got to get my cursor in this field, and then I'll sort Z to A. So you see the 2013 years are ahead of the 2012. Moving on to step six, we go back to the original Art Objects file. Again, we make a copy of it by holding down Control and dragging. We name the copy Q6, and in question 6, we're to sort, but by multiple fields. So to sort by multiple fields, you have to go to the Data tab and to this button, the Sort command. We are going to sort the objects first by category. So our first sort is by category. We're sorting from Z to A. And when there's a tie, we're next going to add another level, and this one is going to be sorted on location. So we'll choose location as our field, and we're going to leave that A to Z. Our level is going to be artist, so we'll, we'll sort by the artist name, and we're going to leave that in the A to Z order. Date acquired will be our fourth level. 
and that one we're going to go from oldest to newest. So this was actually question six was a four level sort. Sort by category, location, artist, and date acquired. So let's click OK. And so let's see, we started with category. So we have textiles and sculptures, for example. And when we have a tie, like all the sculptures here, it then sorted by location. So that's why courtyard is in front of East Pavilion. And when these were tied, it went by the artist. And so that's why we have Akani before Battenberg. And let's see if we have any ties by the artist. Okay, here's one. So we have two guys here, the same artist. And so then it was sorted by the, the last sort, which was date acquired, oldest first. So 711 is older than 713. Let's go on to question number seven. In question seven, we again make a copy of the original art object sheet. So I'll control drag it to the right, I'll double click, and I'll call it Q7. In question seven, they want us to filter the table so that we only can see art objects with the word cowboy in the title. So there's a couple of ways we can do it. If we click the filter arrow on the title where we're going to find cowboy, we can do a text filter. So I'm going to do a text filter where it contains the word cowboy. So if it contains cowboy, I want it to show. So I'll click OK, and you'll see that there are only four files that have the word cowboy in their title. In step eight, once again, we make a copy of the art objects sheet. We'll call that Q8. And in question eight, we're going to use the total row to calculate the average value of the objects acquired between 2009 and 2013. So first of all, how do we get the total row on? A couple of ways. One way is you can right click and you can go to table and you can click on total row. That will do it. Another way is to go to the table tools design and click the button next to total row. That'll do it as well. The default is to total and sum up your rightmost um, column that contains numbers. But what we want is the average value of the objects, not the total value. And we also want to have this between 2009 and 2013. So that means we're going to have to do some filtering as well. So let's start here. Let's start with this. This is the sum because the default on your total row is to sum. But we can easily change that to average. That's the average of all of the work, but we want to filter so that we're only looking through 2009 through 2013. If you want to filter, use the filter arrow. One way to do that is to just turn off 2006, 2007, and 2008, and that leaves on 2009 through 2013. So I'll click OK, and you'll notice that so our average price there has increased. Now it says to sort the data by date acquired with the oldest first. So we have a filter here, but we can also sort. So we're going to sort from the oldest. No, I take that back. We're to sort the data by the date acquired newest first. So we're going to sort by newest to oldest. And so let's look at the dates here. You can see 2013, 2012. That appears to be working well. In question number nine, we again go back to the Art Objects tab, control drag over and position it, and then let's make this one Q9. So what are we doing in question nine? We're going to do the subtotal command. We want to know how many art objects there are in each location. All right, so before you can subtotal, you have to do two things. You have to take this out of the table mode. Remember when we did insert table? So we're going to have to undo that. And then the second thing is you have to sort on what you're going to subtotal on. So since we're going to subtotal to find out how many art objects there are in each location, we're going to have to sort on location. So let's take our first step. Let's get this out of the table mode. The way to do that is to right click anywhere inside the table go to table and choose convert to range. That to me is the easiest way to do it, but there's another way. As always in Excel, there's many ways to do things. 
If you go to Table Tools Design, you'll also find a command, Convert to Range. It converts this table into a normal range of cells. So I'm going to choose that, and it asks for a confirmation, yes, I'm sure. So now we don't have filter arrows, and we don't have that Table Tools Design tab. Now we're ready for Step 2. Remember, Step 2 was you have to sort on what you're going to subtotal on. So I'm going to sort by location, put your cursor in the location field anywhere, and choose, you can use this sort if you want, or you can go to data sort. So we're going to sort. Okay, so see how we have courtyard, east pavilion. If I scroll down, you'll find garden, south pavilion, and west pavilion. I want to subtotal, and I want to know how many pieces of art we have in the courtyard. So the, uh, a way to count that is to count my artist ID because these are unique. We're going to go to subtotal. Now subtotal is darkened. It's available for me. If you were to come over to subtotal and it were grayed out or unavailable, I can guarantee you that you did not change this to a range. You've still got it a table. You can't subtotal if it's a formal table. All right, so let's go to subtotal. And here, at each change in, this is the field that you sorted on. What did we sort on? We sorted on location. So that's what goes here. At every change in location, we want to count. We're trying to figure out how many pieces of art are in the courtyard. Where do we want that account to appear? I'm going to put it over. I don't want it on the appraised value because I'm not summing. I want to count next to the artist IDs. We had six pieces of artwork in the courtyard. And then the East Pavilion, which is really long. We had 89 pieces of work. The garden had six. And then we have a grand total of 116.